We're in module 14 and this is our second video and today we're going to talk about multiplication of radical expressions. We did add and subtract so now we're going to do multiplication. And again, before we even begin, I want to reiterate, everything we do with multiplication are the same rules we learned from the previous sections, the previous modules. All that's going to be different is we're going to have root symbols. So let's go to the board and work some problems. First of all, we have to understand, to multiply, you do not need to be alike. You have to think about multiplication like thinking about breeding animals. If I have a Labrador Retriever and you have a Poodle, we can hook them up and they can breed and make a new breed, a Labradoodle. Breeding is multiplying, making many more animals. So you have to understand, when we talk about multiplication, terms do not have to be exactly alike. Okay, so in our notes, we're going to look at examples one and two right now. And I want to bring you back to basics. If I asked you to multiply eight times two, would you have a problem with that? No. You all know eight times two is 16. So now, what I'm doing that's different is this. I'm asking you to multiply the square root of 8 times the square root of 2. The rule is, if the number is inside a radical, you multiply it to a number that is inside a radical. And the answer would be inside a radical. So we're going to write down the root symbol, and 8 times 2 is 16. So these are not alike, but that's okay. I'm not asking you to add. I'm not asking you to subtract. I'm asking you to multiply. Now, if you look, this cannot be the final answer because we've already discussed if you have a root symbol, the answer must be reduced. What is the square root of 16? Well, 16 is a perfect square, means, which means we know a number times itself that's 16, and that would be 4. Okay, to look at example 2, let's review. What did it mean when I wrote negative 3x squared? Well, we've already discussed this semester that squaring means to multiply this twice. So we would write negative 3x times negative 3x. And from chapter 12, our previous modules, we would multiply the coefficients first. So negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. And then we would multiply the variables. x times x to the day you die is x squared. Because we learned when you multiply variables, you add their exponents. So, now look, here's the example I'm giving you in chapter 15. Instead of using a variable x, I'm using a square root. Again, the definitions do not change. Squaring means we want to multiply this twice. So we're going to write negative 3 square root of 10 times negative 3 square root of 10. The rule for multiplying radicals is very simple. You multiply what's on the outside times what's on the outside. You multiply what's on the inside times what's on the inside. Very simple. Just like here, you multiply the coefficients and then the variables. You're going to multiply the coefficients and then the roots. So negative 3 times negative 3 is still positive 9. A square root of 10 times a square root of 10 is going to be 100 but it's going to be inside a square root symbol because both of these numbers are inside a square root symbol. So what's on the outside stays on the outside. What's on the inside when you multiply stays on the inside. Now that cannot be the final answer because we have a square root symbol and we all know 100 is a perfect square. So what times itself is 100? That's 10. Do we square root 9? No, there's no square root symbol, so we bring it down. How are these two numbers connected? Well, there's nothing in between them, so that's multiplication. 9 times 10 is 90. Basic rules. A monomial times a monomial is a monomial. One root a monomial, one root a monomial, the answer is a monomial. Now, if you recall, not everything we multiplied this semester were monomials. Remember, there are binomials and trinomials. So let's go to our notes and look at some other examples. Okay. 
if you look at example four, we now want to multiply a monomial, square root of 10, times a binomial, square root of 2 plus square root of 5. Again, we're going to relate this back to what we've already learned. So let's go to the board. Suppose, from already previous chapters, I had asked you to multiply 10 to 2x plus 5. Well, we've already discussed this. From our previous chapters, can you take a 2x and add it to a 5? No. Why not? It's not alike. So because we can't do what's inside the parentheses, we take this 10 and we distribute it. What does distribute mean? To give to all. We multiply the 10 to the 2x, we get 20x. We multiply the 10 to the 5, and we get a positive 50. And that gets rid of the parentheses. We still can't add because these are not like terms, so we're done. We're going to do the same thing today. In radical world, you can multiply a monomial times a binomial the same way. Remember, this says add. Can we add a square root of 2 to a square root of 5? No, we cannot. They are not exactly alike. They are two different values in there. We can't reduce that because square root of 2 is in lowest terms and square root of 5 is in lowest terms. So we can't do what's on the inside. So the only thing we can do is multiply. We're going to use our distributive property. Square root of 10 times square root of 2. That's inside the radical. That's inside the radical. So we multiply it. The answer is going to be inside the radical. We're going to do it again. Now everybody look closely. Is that plus in the radical sign symbol? No, it's not. So leave the plus sign on the outside. We're going to multiply a square root of 10 times a square root of 5. Again, that number's inside, that number's inside, so we multiply them and get 50, that's inside. Now we're supposed to add, but again, are these alike? No, they're not identical, but wait a minute. Now they're bigger numbers, which means we can break them down. So let's break down our roots. What perfect square is in 20? 4. 4 times 5 is 20. So we're going to square root 4. We're going to square root 5. What is the square root of 4? That's a 2. It comes out because we did the operation. Can we square root 5? Never. Bring down your plus. Now we're going to do the square root of 50. What perfect square divides into 50? That's right. It's 25. It's 25 times 2. So we're going to square root 25. We're going to square root 2. What is the square root of 25? That's a perfect square. That's 5. Can you square root 2? Never. So now let's look. It says to add. Can we add? Are these terms alike? No, they're not alike. Square root of 5 is not like a square root of 2. We can't do anything else because that is in lowest terms. So that is our answer. That would just be like in chapter 12 when I ask you to add an x plus a y. Can you add the letter x to the letter y? No. So you leave it x plus y. So it's very important you understand we're multiplying. We're still going to use the same rules. Now, let's look at our notes at another example. Because we learned, not only do you multiply monomials, not only do you multiply a monomial times a binomial, but you can also multiply binomials times binomials. So if you look at example six in your notes, this is important. We're going to review something we've learned already. If you look, here are two terms, a binomial. Here are two terms, a binomial. I want to multiply binomials. There is a special way, a process we learned to do this. Okay, it has a special name. Let's recall what we've learned back in chapter 12. If an I wrote, wrote 7x plus 5 times 2x minus 5, you would all know what to do. A binomial times a binomial is always doing the FOIL method. FOIL is a cute way to remember how to distribute. So FOIL isn't anything special, it's just a way to distribute. Do you remember what FOIL stands for? 
F stands for first. So you would say, okay, these are the first terms. 7x times 2x is 14x squared. What does O stand for? That's the outers. That's 7x times negative 5, which is negative 35x. What does I stand for? That's the inners. Positive 5 times 2x is positive 10x. And L stood for the last. Positive 5 times negative 5, negative 25. So remember, FOIL is just a cute way to remember how to distribute. And when you do FOIL, you're only going to use it with a binomial times a binomial. Remember I told you a cute way to do it is to put the eyeballs, and if you do it right, you make the smiley man. Eyebrow, mouth, nose, eyebrow. When you do FOIL, you always get four terms. Now the parentheses are gone. But remember, what do you know about the terms in the middle? That's right, they're alike, so you got to put them together. So this would be 14x squared minus 25x minus 25. Ring a bell? I hope so, because guys, I want you to multiply this now. Even though I don't have x's and I have root symbols, it doesn't matter. This is still two terms of binomial. This is still two terms of binomial. We're still just going to do good old FOIL. So let's try it. Okay, so again, if you need the visual, put your eyeballs. Who's first? 7 times 2 is first. What's 7 times 2? 14. Who are your outers? That's the little man's mouth. That's 7 times a negative square root of 5. Now it's important to pay attention. When you're multiplying, what's on the outside of the root symbol stays on the outside. That is on the outside. It is not in the root symbol. That is on the outside. That is not in the root symbol. What is 7 times a negative? That's negative 7. This is on the inside. He stays on the inside. So do not make a 35 here. That's a whole number. It stays on the outside. That's a root. It stays on the inside. Okay, I is your innards. That's his nose. Again, the positive is on the outside. The 2 is a whole number. It's on the outside. So a positive times a 2 is positive 2. And then you'd put behind it the square root of 5. You cannot make this 10. That's a whole number, that's a root. This stays on the outside, this stays on the inside. Okay, L is last. That's the other eyebrow. Again, look at the symbols. The positive times the negative is on the outside. It stays on the outside. Positive times the negative is a negative. Square root of 5 and square root of 5, they're both inside. So you can multiply them. And when you multiply them, they stay inside. So 5 times 5 is 25. Just like we did FOIL in the past, what happens is your outers and inners should be like terms. That's a square root of 5. That's a square root of 5. They're exactly alike, so we could put them together. So we bring down our 14, negative 7 square roots of 5 plus 2 square roots of 5, a negative 7 plus 2 you would subtract and get negative 5 square roots of 5. Remember, when you add and subtract, what's alike? stays the same. You bring down the minus. Now what do you all know about the square root of 25? It's a perfect square. So what is the square root of 25? It's 5. So now look, are we done? We have one, two, three terms. But wait a minute, we still have terms that are alike that can be put together. This is a whole number 14. This is a whole number 5. We got to put it together. 14 minus 5 is 9. And we said in radical world, the constant goes in the front. What we have to bring down is the negative 5 square roots of 5. And that would be your answer. Because you can't go on any further. That's a whole number and that's a root. So you cannot subtract them. Okay, let's try one more example in the notes. Let's look at example 7. You have, again, 3 plus square root of 5 times 3 minus square root of 5. Okay? We have two terms of binomial times two terms of binomial. The rule is the rule. To multiply binomials, you do FOIL. 
Foil is a fancy way to distribute. It's just an easy way to remember it. So we start with the first. Who's first? Three times three is nine. Then we do the outers, the mouth. Three times a negative square root five. That's on the outside and that's on the outside. So three times a negative is negative three and it has a square root of five. They're listed side by side. That's multiplication. We do the inners. Positive square root of five times three. That's on the outside, that's on the outside. So a positive times a three is positive three. That stays on the inside. Square root five. Then we do the last. Positive square root of five times negative square root of five. The positive and the negative are on the outside. So what's a positive times a negative? A negative. Square root of five and square root of five are on the inside. What's a square root of five times a square root of five? Square root of 25. They're both on the inside, so you multiply them and put the answer on the inside. Again, when we do FOIL, we get four terms. It's usually the outers and the inners we combine. What do you notice about them? Are they alike? Sure they are. They both have a square root of five. So if I have a negative three and you have a positive three and we put it together, what does it make? It makes zero. Do we write zero square root of five? No. Zero means there's none there. Those are additive inverses, opposites, so they cancel out. Just like positive 3x and negative 3x cancel out and make nothing. So now what do we have? We have a 9 minus, and we all know what is the square root of 25. It's 5. Well, is that the final answer? No, because what's 9 minus 5? That's 4. Now, I taught you guys some tricks in the beginning of the semester. Don't forget, we can use those tricks throughout. We learned a trick when we multiply special binomials. These are special because if you remember, they have the same terms. They both have a three, they both have a square root of five. What you did was change the middle symbol. We learned way back when, in the first couple of modules, binomials whose middle symbol is changed are called conjugates. And we learned a trick. To multiply conjugates, you do not have to do first, outer, inner, last. You're doing too much work. All you got to do to multiply conjugates is the first and the last. So watch, guys. This was the first. This was the last. That's all you have to do because the outers and inners are always going to cancel. So when I do that, 3 times 3 is 9. There's the first. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is the square root of 25. There's the last. And then I could have went right from here and said 9 minus 5 is 4. So the moral of the story is to multiply in radical world are the same rules as multiplying in polynomial world. When you multiply a monomial times a monomial, your answer is always a monomial. To multiply a monomial times a polynomial, you do distributing. And to multiply a binomial times a binomial, it's the FOIL method. Okay, have a good day.